Zo, so, Tal of uh, Lazus. We are here uh, at the co-working mm. space in, in Tel Aviv. Um, uh, Lazus, for people who don't know what it is, uh, what is it? So Lazus is a, is a group, a project, a company, a community that creates a, a real-time ride-sharing application, a solution. Um, it's, we aim to allow people uh, to drive their own path and pick people on the way in real time without uh, having to set everything, anything in advance or uh, be obliged to go, to go out this, uh, at a certain time from a certain place. Um, we aim in a way the holy grail uh, of uh, smart transportation, you know, dropping significantly the number of cars on the roads. We want to have less cars. Um, and I think that the most uh, innovative idea or uh, what makes me uh, excited about Lazuz is, the, is our uh, model of uh, fair share in, in transportation. So if I'm uh, giving you a lift, uh, I'm getting paid for uh, some expenses that I've, uh, I've had during that way. We share the expenses. But other than that, uh, it's obvious that in order to have a real-time ride-sharing application, and many have tried, and most have failed uh, miserably, uh, you have to have a, 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 th a critical mass of people uh, activating the application at the same time in the same places in order for it to work. And the hard part is to incentivize the first group to actually uh, build a network uh, of people uh, so what you have to do, you have to in some way uh, pay or give value for those who actually do that. Uh, Uber, for example, pays uh, those first drivers. And what we want to do is share the value with them. So if you uh, download the Lazuz app and you drive with it and it didn't take anyone for a ride, but you just turn it on, uh, you already get uh, some kind of reward for what you have done. And if Lazuz will succeed dramatically, then you will also uh, be rewarded for that because we've actually helped to build the initial network that will allow us to grow. So our model incorporates the reward of early adopters mm -hmm. and then we try to incentivize uh, the network to grow out of itself without actually, uh, we don't want to spend too much money into building the network which allows, which makes us share uh, in a way the success of Lazos as well with the users. Yes, yeah, so, so, uh, so you also share the risk of being Lazos being a success or not being a success with everybody who's who's uh, putting value in the in the in the platform uh, in the community. Yeah, exactly. We 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 have to think of it in a way as a momentum economy, where you know the network is the important stuff. So, how do you build and, and create a network? You make everybody uh, partners mm -hmm. in that network. So, for example, in Uber, I, I go back to Uber, but Facebook, m many other companies that build a collaborative economy, they created the service. The service is it's worth a lot, but they usually take a high margin uh, mm -hmm. for participation. And once another network will, s will provide similar service with much less costs, they will probably be incentivized to move. Uh, so what we do, we actually want the people to own the network. So it will be their own network. And their own uh, its success or failure will be a part of their uh, success or failure as well. So Yeah, uh, interesting. And, 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 and where, does, where does the idea come from? So the, the idea came from uh, quite in a way the w of what uh, I just, uh, mm -hmm. uh, in the way I, I tell the story right now. So Matan uh, and Chai who founded Lazuz uh, a couple of years ago, they had the problem of how would we reach critical mass. So they went to that solution of, yeah. of uh, actually uh, sharing uh, yeah. the yeah. company with, yeah. with its users. But, but the solution uh, is, 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 is quite unique. It, 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 it's also built on the, uh, on, on the blockchain uh, Oh, protocol. in that sense, of course, yeah. So w once they decided to, to, uh, to go for that uh, direction, to share the, the company, so how would you do that? Would you share equity? Would you give options to, to the users? It's, it's a bit of a problem once, uh, once you offer uh, equity to uh, 50,000 people. So uh, you have to be regulated in very... Mm -hmm. uh, a uh, very unique way. So and also fit out found people from maybe 20 different countries. Of course. About yes. the regulations. Uh. <laughs> so the regulation will go <laughs> several times uh, more complicated than that. We'll go through that. Um, so the solution we go for is, uh, is based on the blockchain. So what we actually do is we say, okay, every drive, every kilometer that you, uh, that you drive is actually, you pay for that with a unique coin, that we call Zeus. And um, so if I 
hitch a ride with you, I pay for you with Zeus. And if you hitch a ride later, you pay that Zeus for someone who, uh, who you give a, a, a lift for. And we reward all the people that build the network with Zeus as well. We create new Zeus for those who actually build the network all the time. And if you are the first ones, then, then your Zeus will multiply over time as, as, as the network grows. This is part of the model. And the idea is that at, at some point where this network is already built and there are lots of cars and I, who haven't participated in that initial group, want to hitch a ride, I have to buy those zoos in order to, to drive, in order to, yeah. to, to get a ride. And then when, when people who weren't involved in the initial building of the network uh, actually start using it, and they are the users in a way, that they are first buying the zoos and then driving, um, uh, they bring value into those zoos. So everybody are given zoos. In, in Lazoos, from the start, um, this cryptocurrency called Zeus. So in Lazoos, from the start, the developers, the programmers, the designers, uh, lawyers, everyone involved around mm -hmm. it uh, and got rewarded in Zeus. Investors got Zeus. Uh, so everybody are also aligned in the sense of, uh, of their incentives. Yeah. So uh, the success of one person is the success of the whole group and not one person succeeds over the others. Who are in regular companies, uh, you know, the management, the employees, and the investors uh, most of the times have different sets of incentives. So we also try to make this set uh, the same. Um, so yeah, it is meant to be built on the blockchain. Uh, hopefully in the future it will also be completely decentralized in a way that uh, it will be just clients speaking to clients, phones speaking to phones, people to people, without any servers, without anything along the way. Uh, at the moment we're building it step by step in order to, uh, to make it, uh, you know, everything is so new in that space. Yeah, yeah. So, you, uh, so, uh, so you're really pioneering. Yeah, we're pioneering that and we're doing that slowly. And, and, and in what way, like uh, when I'm a lawyer, I'm not, but let's see, I'm yeah. a lawyer, and I put, let's say, 10 hours uh, uh, in Lanzus, uh, uh, at what way do you measure or say, okay, this is worth an X amount of, of, of Zeus tokens? So who, the, the ones who decided the one uh, is the community. So the, it's the people that already has the Zeus. Um, there are several ways to evaluate that. Uh, we used several that uh, didn't work that well because they were mostly uh, too far apart. So you would give 10 hours and you will have to wait a month until you knew how to be evaluated. And now we're trying to create a system in which you give this hour or two, you'll immediately get incentive, you'll get a, you'll know how evaluated you are. If those, those two hours of you uh, have given you lots of zoos or, or less zoos. So if the community thinks you really give a lot to the, to the network, you'll be given lots of zoos in order to incentivize it to give again. And if not, you'll get less. So, um, and how did you change the system from, from, from a lot of time till almost real time uh, that, you, that you know how much zoos you will get for, for your work you were doing? So um, again, this is everything is dynamic. We're still working on mm -hmm. to find the, the correct uh, method for that. But um, uh, what we used to have is a system in which you would uh, evaluate people over a, a long amount of time. So once every month, everybody will evaluate everybody and we'll had, we had an algorithm that would give the value to, to each one. Um, what I actually, uh, Matan and, and I actually found a backfeed uh, a year ago, which was a split from Lazoos in order to build the incentivizing system um, and the infrastructure for a, uh, for uh, this kind of evaluation. Mm -hmm. The idea is to break it down into smaller systems in which I evaluate the people I'm working with and uh, only a small set of people. And above that, everybody evaluate the actual uh, uh, work. So yeah. let's say we are four developers working together, we can evaluate each other. And at the end, uh, the community at all just evaluates our product. Uh, if we did a wonderful iOS app or a terrible mm -hmm. iOS app. Uh, uh, okay, it's interesting. It's, uh, it, 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 it's also maybe something where, where people in, in, in organizations, when they're talking about uh, working with uh, di different departments, can, uh, can, uh, can learn from. Yeah, so it's, it's again, it's an experiment. Everything mm -hmm. is, we're partnering in several spaces at the same time. And one of the things we, we think about at Lazuz at the moment is whether we should uh, focus more on incentivizing the early networks or uh, pioneer this. How, how, should, how much should we pioneer this field of? actually a, a totally flat organization where we actually also crowdsource the management, the decision of what we're doing. So um, it started as a completely flat, everybody did what they like and everybody could evaluate for that. And we are uh, again experimenting with that and, and trying different, method, different methods of 
of, uh, of how, how much to allow everyone to do and we evaluated that. Uh, but once this is done, once we find a good system for that, uh, it can be done for in-house projects and companies, it can be done you know, for startups. At the moment we start mm. a startup, we give X percentage to each one, that's yeah. what we are uh, running with at yeah. the end of time. Um, and so we think about a dynamic system in which my weight, both in way of how, va- how much value I get from the system and uh, how much influence I have over it in decision yeah. making, is dynamic over time. So if I'm very, very intensely into it and my work is being uh, highly evaluated, I get more and I'm incentivized to do more yeah. for the group. Yeah. And do people get, get rewarded by the hours they put in or the, the, the output they, uh, they, they, they will create? So the idea is the output. So yeah. the, the, there's, there are specific cases in which the output is, uh, is very, very attached to the amount of time that you put into things. But, uh, but it is that you value, that you evaluate uh, the actual contribution, the actual value people put and, and not their effort. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting too, because also which, uh, if we're going to use the system also for, for internal projects in organizations, uh, organizations they are not, uh, uh, people are not, are, not, are not getting their salary based on, on the value they add, but on the time they are in organization in, in, yeah. in many, uh, not, all, not always, but in many cases. Yeah, so I think that will be really, really interesting. Yeah, there, there are specific places. That's actually you know in the financial sector the, where uh, where traders work in, mm. in in companies. Then it's very easy to measure the success because you have a number and at the end of each day. So actually, in those uh, ecosystems, you can have systems in which uh, you know if I'm a good trader, I can ski most of my life, uh, and yet I'll be rewarded highly because I'm. It's very easy to measure my success. Or, yeah. Uh, so we're trying to do something similar. You know, we try to allow it in a way. So if I'm a group, if I'm a company, and I uh, or a community, and uh, similar to us, we're doing some project and we do it that in a decentralized, collaborative manner. Uh, so we have to decide for ourselves whether we want to have it uh, hourly based or not. We c- what we are trying to do is to give the option of doing it value based. Yeah. Um, yeah. And if we do it value based, you incentivize. Uh, the people that contribute the most to the system to contribute more. Uh, if you do it hourly based, you maybe you uh, you promote other values which are important to the group. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You can do it not only hour based. You can also do it uh, gender based. You can do it in any other sense you like. Uh, yeah. As long as the community. But yeah, uh, or maybe more hybrid model where you say, okay, uh, you uh, you get a, a basic income. And uh, from that you can add uh, extra uh, value by the value you really contribute. Because in the end, it's, it's when you're only going to judge on the value you add, uh, then you really have to, uh, yes, it, I think in many cases it's quite hard because um, then you really have to define what is success. And also prevent that people are going to do, do things that are really good for the short term, so for their, for their own good, but that are, are bad decisions for the, for the company uh, on long term. So that depends on how the company can, how the group can evaluate it. Because yeah. if I'm one of the values of, of the group and I think to the long term, and that's the way I evaluate things, then those yeah. are the decisions that yeah. will be evaluated more. Uh, and another point to that, and I think this is the most important thing. Once you do it uh, over blockchain, and once you do such, a, once you build such a system, another thing that you get is transparency. So everybody know what are the rules uh, and how uh, how much you get rewarded and who gets rewarded more and less, and everything is much more in the open. Mm. So uh, if it's conducted correctly, this could lead, um, I think, to uh, much more healthy organizations. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't than we have today. Yeah, I really believe, it. I, I really believe, I believe in that. I'm really looking forward to, to, to your next experience in that. <laughs> About yeah. healthy is uh, spoken. Um, because now uh, everybody who's contributing uh, is getting paid in, in Zeus, uh, but in the end, you also have uh, what you, uh, you have t- uh, three children. You, you're living in yeah. Jerusalem, so you have to travel. That that's, that's also costs money. So in the end, uh, people who are working in the projects also have to pay their bills. Uh, and, and what way do you manage to keep this uh, running? Yeah. So this is a it's a good question. For me, at the moment, uh, uh, it's not uh, at the moment. I'm not getting paid for that. Uh, what we are trying to do as well is to allow, uh, for example, investors to risk share with people. I will pay part of your salary, but I want to get part of, of your zoo. So I'm, as we see, yeah. as we see the future of those organizations, I see uh, actually 
uh, investors starting to invest in people other than in, in because they can buy those at a, at a specific rate, but if they uh, risk share with the best developers mm-hmm. in the team, they'll get much more zoos per yeah, dollar yeah. That, that they put into it. So that that the way investors are going to invest in the future in those kind of decentralized organizations, they have to invest in the people that steer uh, the organization to the con- to the direction that they want and that they believe they're, they're the most evaluated by the yeah. community. Yeah, you said uh, uh, before we started uh, uh, with the interview that 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 now the time is that our, uh, uh, all changes they are clear and now it's it's just <clears throat> a matter of fact of 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 doing and building and make it a success. <laughs> Uh, I would say everything is clear, but I think ah, okay. But, but <laughs> yeah. it's it, it's I think especially when you started, it it, uh, it was nothing was clear, and now maybe thirty percent is clear, and the rest is, is so so it's it's still a, a a really interesting experiment, I guess. But um, what were the biggest challenges in 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 in, in starting with this with a uh, inspiring but fake idea? Uh, because I also served uh, uh, and also filmed a presentation of uh, of uh, of made an uh, about nine months ago in Utrecht, and it was a presentation of two hours. The first hour I could understand what, what he was saying. The second hour I had no idea. <laughs> uh, so it's 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 really uh, the potential is really big, uh, but it's also really uh, experimenting with also technical uh, uh, aspects. Uh, aspects on it. So so, at what way did you manage or did you all manage to 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 get the first part of the journey uh, successful? So. Um yeah, first I, I'll make something again, I'll take a step back and, and describe a bit Lazuz in that sense. So like I said, everybody is contributing as much as they want uh, at the time and, and how much. So I, I'm a member of Lazuz, but I'm, uh, I'm representing my own opinion. So we are a community of people working on the same idea, but uh, everybody has their own viewpoint and, and uh, a bit of a different uh, direction to that. And what we do is at the moment, in a way, the 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 mix of everyone's ideas, um, so I think uh, yeah, Lazuz Lazuz is interesting I think because it innovates in so many directions. So uh, I'll take just the, the major two of them, which is the the incentivizing the incentive the bootstrapping of a network uh, of critical mass for for a network based application, uh, the way you reward early adopters. And the second is the generalization of that and is to incentivizing the whole uh, organization working together mm-hmm. toward that uh, end. So we can, we can imagine also a completely centralized company, business company, uh, which all they do is that they share part of the success of their, they don't share their equity, mm-hmm. they share their uh, driving tokens, their uh, driving vouchers. So if you build a network, you get many more vouchers than you would otherwise, and those vouchers, when you start driving, are worth zero, but if the network succeeds, each of them will be worth a lot. So, uh, so they share success, but they don't share any equity. Uh, so you can think of innovating only in that field. And, uh, and I think the second field of innovating in the way we, are, we manage ourselves is, uh, is a huge, huge change uh, in its own. And what Lazus did from the start was uh, not only, you know, you talk about the interview with Matan. Mm-hmm. Matan thinks about this kind of innovation, this innovation, and the way the whole future of work is going to look like. Uh, in work and transportation. And, yeah, not yeah. only transportation, but every yeah. single thing that we work upon. How, yeah. how will organizations actually exist yeah. in the future? And that's, uh, that's what Backfit is aiming at the moment. Uh, a very basic infrastructure for, for a world that is not yet here, in, in many senses. And so w- what happened to us in the start is that w- people were very excited about, about both ideas, I think. And many people that I talked mm-hmm. about Lazuz uh, with and many other people that heard about Lazuz uh, would immediately try, w- want to join, want to test it, mm-hmm. want to try and, and do something for it and see how much they get in return and how much they, are, they can get involved into it. Um, I think it's excited in that, in that sense. And what Lazuz did up until now is, is try to go both ways, you know, make, uh, make everything decentralized, everything shareable, everything collaborative. And it, it, you know, we're experimenting again in so many fields, mm-hmm. and it was very hard to do that without a very clear set of rules. And what we're now, now doing, I think we got this line pretty well. We know how this should happen, this, how this incentivizing system should work 
of uh, building the network, I think it's, it's much more simpler, it's a simpler question than how to make everybody work together. Mm -hmm. And this we all, we decided in a way to take this part in steps. So we'll be uh, almost completely decentralized and, and, and keep the innovation in the way we build the networks. But we'll probably take the collaboration step by step in a way that people, like you said, uh, first people will, it will probably be ki some kind of a dynamic organization in which you'll, you'll have people actually working for that, mm -hmm. the main core team, and people that will be able to join as much as they like and, and get rewarded for that yeah. according to a specific set that they know in advance. So if you look at the, at the futuristic organization, you know, everybody can join every time, always. Uh, if you take one step backwards, say, okay, not everybody can join every time. You can call me, I'll let you in, and I'll show you around a bit. It, it puts a limit on how many people I can add to yeah. the system per time, but it makes the system much simpler to, yeah. to yeah. actually work with. Yeah, but I think also, uh, the, 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 uh, many people are now experimenting with, 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 with everything. And what I see is that most of the times, uh, extreme things uh, will, will never work. So there's the uh, same like with, uh, with uh, democracy, you can say, okay, we're going to do everything transparent, everybody can follow every decision we're going to make, uh, everybody will get an app, and, and, and you get an alert where we're going to vote for a new, a new law, and you can yeah. say yes or no. So that's a really bad thing, but also the other side is, oh, so, so in the end, it's, it's, it's never left or right, it's always- Somewhere uh, in the middle. Somewhere in the middle, and I think that that's also with, with central and decentral, uh, maybe also completely decentral is maybe a, a, a bad idea because there also has to be some central uh, 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 elements in uh, to to make it work. Maybe also to 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 to, to get it uh, work also uh, on uh, a long time. Be uh, so yeah, I think it's interesting. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I really believe in that approach to life in which no extreme is uh, is right. We should always. We should be balanced in every aspect of life. Uh, I'm not sure about complete decentralization. It depends how, you know, we probably have a different, when we, I say complete uh, de decentralization, we use, you say that we probably have a bit different pictures of that. But uh, in a way, nature is being ruled by grassroots rules and not by orchestration in, in, in some way. So uh, I, I'm not sure about that. But one thing I am sure about is that if you go to some a set of extreme, and you start from there, and it doesn't work, uh, you have a very hard time telling what's, what's wrong mm -hmm. in everything. So if you take things step by step, you can check every step that you are doing, that you are actually uh, made some progress yeah. in a way. And um, um, so, uh, uh, yeah, in, in general, <laughs> again, <laughs> I, I, I agree, I, I am, I personally, for doing, uh, for moving toward that end in, in, in measured steps along the way and learning every step how, yeah. uh, what we did we made, what, what did we make right. Yeah. The thing is that everything is so excit exciting, it's, um, like I said before, there are many decisions to make, on the, the many things that you can, we can do and uh, we have to choose the right. Uh, yeah, yeah, the yeah right but thing. I think also uh, uh, when uh, with Lazuz, when you have one problem solved, there will be 10 others where you start thinking about, okay, but then this, this, this. So, so uh, it's a kind of a never ending puzzle. It's a good life. Yeah, we probably have. We also have so many issues to solve in so many levels, you know, from technically, economically, behavior like, regulation like. Uh, yeah, there are many fields in which, uh, once, you, once you innovate in something, you, you, pro you have many fronts in which you have to. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, and and, and uh, there are now about 3,000. Uh, Users I saw on, on the on the website. Yeah, uh, at the moment it's about three thousand users. Um, you know, we we never did. You no, know, we never had a campaign, for example. We never marketed. Uh, the app is, is in a way is uh, in a very very preliminary mm -hmm. stages. Uh, all that we do with those users at the moment is with as a system of uh, uh, of the technical data that goes in and how we use that. Um, what we'll probably go into is uh, again. It's not completely <laughs> the answer to it. Yeah. Uh, what we'll probably go, go into is uh, we'll break down the system into a into way in which you can have your own community. Uh, not community. No, you, you can have a... If you help, uh, if you, you help build the network in Utrecht mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's being built there, you'll be rewarded for that. 
and this network will be able to live in itself without it dependent on the rest of the world and as well in, in every other community and we hope that all the communities together will will mesh up into yeah, the, yeah. the large ecosystem of, uh, yeah. of lizards. But yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's very interesting. Uh, so I think maybe also a nice example, I did an interview at, at their 3D hubs. Uh, it's, it's a platform where there are 25 3D printers con connected yeah. uh, in the platform. And their growth strategy was they, um, uh, uh, you as a owner of a 3D printer, you could unlock your city, uh, but then you had to find nine other uh, owners of 3D printers. Uh, yeah. And uh, when uh, the 10 uh, were on the platform, then they uh, went uh, to them to have a party. <laughs> so <laughs> so they're flying over the world to have the parties. Nice job. And um, it's but always a good uh, <laughs> thing to do. But then they uh, made their users responsible for uh, being available in their city. Uh, so they say, okay, if you want to have as really helps uh, in, in, in Tel Aviv or in Utrecht or wherever, uh, then you're responsible to get nine other 3D printer owners and then you're unlocked for your city. So they're, that way they're really creating really, a really smart way ambassadors uh, for yeah. the growth uh, in the city because I really believe that, especially with these kind of uh, uh, services, that it will uh, yeah, that you really have to need a really hyper-local focus uh, uh, because in the end, yeah, the demand supply ha has to be in the right balance uh, on a hyper-local level, not on a global level. Yeah, we, call, we, we treat that as a, we need a density of users in specific places. So 3,000 users across the globe is, is not, is, le is less than, than 1,000 people uh, uh, in, in Tel Aviv specifically because 1,000 people in Tel Aviv is useful, 3,000 around the world is not. Um, so uh, what I hope is that again, w once we actually uh, try and build the first community mm. or the first group, uh, uh, our uh, expectations from the way that we incentivize people, again, we, we, don't say, we don't just say bring nine more people, we say uh, once you bring nine more people, what the, those zoos that you get now will be actually worth yeah. more than they are at the moment. So you yeah. have an incentive and for them as well to bring more and more people. In a way it's like a... No, you have pyramid scam, scams in which uh, uh, everyone is getting uh, paid based on those after them, and the last group is the one that loses everything. Yeah. Because they pay for everything. They are paying. <laughs> yeah. uh, they are they are yeah. paying for this. Yeah. So um, uh, I'm looking at this as you know as a, as a positive way in which everybody is building on those coming after them, but the end the end uh, group is a group of users, is me getting a ride from Jerusalem to Tel Aviv yeah. for 20 shekels, yeah. instead of paying uh, 60 and, and uh, staying behind the wheel alone the whole ride. Yeah. So I'm actually getting a service, I'm paying for that service. And th this pay is financing everything that happened behind that. Uh, unlike other systems today in which the, the end user uh, he pays, he usually pays a lot for a small group that finance everything from the beginning, th those initial investors in the startup that allow that service. Yeah. But he'll have to pay them for the rest of, uh, yeah. of his life. We actually want the payment to be, to be done in the growth term. So once you know, Lazuz grows, everybody will get more value for what they have done. But once it's stable in a way, mm -hmm. then you have no more need to, uh, you know, to feed. Yeah. Uh, um, an initial group, so you'll be able to, to provide the service in actual cost. Yeah, and, and now we're talking uh, uh, the, the interview uh, about the Zeus tokens, uh, yeah. but in the end, uh, people also want maybe to convert them to, to, to another currency they can use uh, in the supermarket or to pay their mortgage. Sure. So, so at what, uh, when, or when, uh, I, I don't want to date, but when in the process uh, will the, the physical money get in the system uh, uh, that people so uh, yeah, so um, like you said, at the moment I can't buy food with Zeus. So, uh, but I can't drive with shekels in Lazus. So the money goes into the system when I buy Zeus tokens in order to get a, to get a ride. Uh, so once the user, once actual users are using the system to ride it with it, they have to pay to buy the Zeus tokens. Those Zeus goes into the, the wallet of the community, and everybody can cash out on their Zeus according to their. Uh, the proportion you know, of ownership of that wallet. Um, so that's where the money comes from. But of course, the, it has, it will have to be. Uh, you have to. I'll get Zeus. I should be paid for that. 
No, from, from the user endpoint, uh, I, I'm not sure it will be even visible in a way. So uh, you know, uh, I would imagine the UI such that uh, I connect uh, I know my PayPal account or my Google Pay account or uh, uh, directly to my bank account mm -hmm. or whatever or the Stripe, whatever other system. Yeah. And I pay with checkers for my drive. The fact that those checkers are being translated into Zeus and given to the driver, which is very important to the economy of this ecosystem, uh, this shouldn't be a, an issue for the user. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah I think it's a good so. one because people, they are, they are using the service because it, it, it's the best solution for them and, and, and things like, like extra currencies, uh, it will only be a barrier for them to understand exactly. because they don't care because they want to go from A to B. And, then, and yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think we, we are tackling at the moment the, the economic uh, question uh, very deeply. That's what we have done uh, a long time and it's obvious for us that it shouldn't, you know, it shouldn't bother. Uh, if you want to know about it, everything is transparent. You can read the white paper, you can dive into the details and you can see that because it's, it's open uh, and the code is open. Yeah. But uh, if your user who is not, has no idea about cryptocurrency, it shouldn't be a, a barrier for you. So it's yeah. obvious for us that there'll have to be a very unique UX UI work in yeah. the middle. So it's also quite some work uh, to do. Yeah. And, 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 and uh, what are now f uh, uh, the next steps? Hmm. <laughs> or maybe the next steps? Yeah, so now we, are, we just started a, a three months period in, in Ecomotion Accelerator in Israel. It's a, it's a wonderful, a wonderful accelerator for, uh, um, for transportation uh, based uh, startups. Okay. And uh, our aim is to uh, reach out in three months with a uh, working MVP and that would be able to actually ride with it and be paid with that for Lazo with Zeus. So uh, at the moment people already contributed a lot. People already got Zeus. People are driving with, with our application, with our Android application and, uh, and get Zeus for that. Um, we also have very, very basic uh, option to help for a ride, but we actually want to start a community with uh, with uh, easy to use uh, MVP application, uh, so we'll, this will be able to test the whole economic system mm. behind it as well. Yeah, and uh, like uh, I just also heard that 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 that, that the ways is also now busy with uh, wide Rift uh, experiments. Yeah. In 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 what kind of form is this uh, similar or different? Uh, except the whole uh, 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 um, um, uh, Zeus token. Uh, story, but 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 but, <laughs> but, but uh, when you look uh, when you look at from the from the pers uh, perspective of the end user, the end user who isn't interested in decentralized but just wants to go from A to B. So, uh, no, w without the Zeus token, there's no difference. The, uh, Ride with is a, ri a, a, a live ride sharing app. Zeus is a live ride sharing app. Mm -hmm. That's what we're, we're aiming at. The same thing. Uh, Ways have the uh, uh, wonderful user base that they have at the moment, so they have critical mass already. Uh, this is not their problem. They have users driving all around. They're running a pilot now uh, in, in Tel Aviv area. Um, they allow only uh, driving from work, uh, from home to work, vice versa. And um, what will happen in the end, you know, right with is uh, ways Google actually owns that at the moment. So Google I is a for-profit organization that wants to uh, monetize, right? With the they? Be able to, <laughs> yeah. And they're, again, they, do, they have the, sh the, the user base. Um, what, since Lazuz is going to uh, give uh, in a way and uh, share the success of the system yeah. with the users. So we think we incentivize the first users, of course, more than, right, more than, uh, more than user of more than the users of ride with but mm -hmm. i hope that at the end will it will be the same uh, and it will provide the same service i have yeah. no idea how much google will will uh, demand for that service because they, they have the service they developed it they have a, a large operation running it so they have to yeah. finance that through that uh, so i have no idea what their business model how much they'll take from uh, each one how much uh, would there be a transaction fee how high it will be uh, I guess that since Lazuz doesn't aim, again, Lazuz, the early investors, the investors, the early adopters, the whole group uh, uh, earns money from the growth. Once you mm -hmm. reach the student system, uh, you know, I'm as a user supposed to run the client on my phone and I support the rest of the people around me. So everybody owns the system themselves. I can't imagine how you can have lower fees than what Lazuz will be able to give. Yeah. So at the long run, that's what I 
yeah. think will happen. Lazos or, or something similar. But right with, at the moment, Google has tremendous amount of resources. Uh, they'll be going for that. I hope uh, uh, we'll have a good example. Yeah, <laughs> in yeah. that sense, they'll, uh, they'll actually, you know, another thing is uh, people are used to driving their cars at the moment. They're used to this uh, kind of um, uh, convenience. Um, the whole world is going to, uh, I think we talked a bit about it in a way that cars won't be owned. Mm -hmm. uh, I will be, dr I will be uh, riding a car, I won't be owning it. It will be either a self-sustaining self cars or driving cars. Um, um, so in a way, uh, we're going to have a, a shift in mindset of uh, holding our own cars yeah. and paying a lot for them to be parked whole day so we can drive yeah. whenever we like from the exact point that we reached. Or we can pay much less than that by waiting a bit to take a ride. So we hope that this whole ecosystem, this whole uh, concept of having to own a car will change. And probably I hope Pride with will help to achieve that as well. So I hope that those will enjoy mm -hmm. the benefit of that as well. So more people will actually take uh, hitchhike. Yeah, 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 that's right. Uh, I think it's all, uh, that, because that is also the good thing in uh, competition in a new market uh, because people, they really have to get used to, uh, uh, they have to change their behavior. Yeah. And, and, and how more people uh, or companies are busy with changing this behavior, that that's also really good for the value of everybody. Yeah, yeah. I agree with that. Um, also, I think that um, once everybody, once you know, there's critical mass that will say above that it's, it's, uh, it, it's operational, you'll have another threshold in which you have so many people that whenever I want to take a ride, I have 10 or 20 or 50 people to choose from that are all mm -hmm. equally good for me. Uh, on a matter of taking me from A to B. And at that point, I start choosing people by who I like to drive with. Uh, same similar interests, do we like to talk or we do like to be silent in a way, do we like the same music, uh, et cetera, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. And then you, have, then you actually transform into a matchmaking uh, system. And in that sense, we're already thinking about that. We, we will try to do, once you do things over the blockchain, you're able to, crypt, to encrypt lots of data and you're able to uh, to match make even without actually sharing your personal data with the mm. third party that does the matchmaking. So if you do the matchmaking in a decentralized manner, you keep your own data. If you work with a third party that you gave all the information to them and they do the, uh, uh, all the matchmaking, mm. then you actually share your data with them. So I think in that sense, uh, when we reach that point in which we actually choose all the time who we drive with, mm -hmm. uh, at that point, the, the decentralized architecture in which I have my personal data with me and I just use it to, to match myself to other people uh, offering me a drive uh, directly, toward, directly with them, uh, is, uh, will have, this kind of architecture will have much more benefit than, thir than a centralized third party um, service. That yeah, that. yeah, I really believe that. And, and I also have to say the same vision about the future because now <coughs> the, the, the match of demand supply of ride sharing is made on practical uh, yeah. uh, 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 calculations because, okay, I want, uh, because the, 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 the supply isn't that big, but in the end, when the supply is big enough, you can make other, uh, also would say match amazing, uh, other decision and also uh, say, okay, uh, but also make, make other combinations of, of, of creating value. like. When I, when, like uh, when you want to learn Dutch, I can speak Dutch, so you drive with me, yeah. and then I will learn your Dutch uh, during the drive, and I will pay with uh, with this social value uh, for driving with you. So there are many really interesting scenarios uh, possible. Yeah, cool. I would completely agree. <laughs> cool. I'm. Uh, I'm in for that ride with the Dutch. Yeah, I, I have okay, to, uh, let's do it. Okay, <laughs> to catch up with that. <laughs> Great. Hey, thank you very much for the interview. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Forward. Yeah, and uh, good luck with all the experiments, and uh, I'll keep following it. <laughs>